to debate whether Tesla has more room to run. Ross Gerber of Gerber Kawasaki, he's the CEO and president, along with Craig Irwin, Roth Capital Senior Research Analyst. And Mike mentioned, gentlemen, that not everyone is in love with Tesla and there is some division on the street. So, Craig, I'm going to start with you. We see this nice record number here, but it looks like you don't think this is going to last. What do you think of Tesla? Yeah, so it's a tough day to be a bear with the stock at, uh, at new highs, right? <laughs> but the reality is, you know, trade is traded, Tesla's trading on hopes and dreams right now. And, you know, I'm not a weather vane, I'm an analyst. My job is to break out the calculator. We're going to see decelerating growth. Um, the expectations from the bulls around China are far too high. And, uh, you know, competition is coming that's real. So, yes, China is going to be a great market for them. But I think the number for 2020 is more like 50,000 units, not 150,000 units. And I think that things are getting pretty frothy up here. It really does deserve to be a $250 stock. Ross, in, in your view, why has it done so well of late? Well, I think everything that Craig said is demonstrably false. I don't know where he gets his numbers. He probably pulls them out of his weather vane because he's 100 percent wrong so far. I, first of all, sales are going to go up by 40 to 50 percent next year because China is coming online and is coming on faster than what anybody thought. Ross, so, you can't say someone is demonstrably wrong about a forecast for next year. You don't, you don't demonstrably know. OK, well, you'll right. put me on in a year. Put me on in a year and we'll see. Um, Fine. I, you you I, might I, end up being right, but you can't be guaranteed to suggest you are right I, at this I, stage. I, I don't offer guarantees. I just offer past performance. And I've been pretty clear about this company. I know more about this company than any analyst on the street, and that's been proven correct. Um, I'm, I'm, I know what's happening in China. This person does not. And what is happening is amazing. So we've got a car with much higher margins selling to a much bigger market of people who love Elon Musk and love Tesla. And um, what we're seeing is a much more efficient fast factory uh, producing at a much lower cost. So this is a huge gold mine potential for Tesla over the next decade to be the leading EV seller in the Chinese market. And I think um, discounting that would be a, one of the biggest mistakes an investor could make. Craig, uh, you, your, your response. You, you know, I don't, I don't typically respond to ad hominem attacks. So, you know, <laughs> what I would point out is that EVs last month were down 47% year over year in China. Um, it's probably about a million unit market this year um, versus two last year or close to two. Um, the reality is most of those EVs have very different character than what we would consider EVs on, on the road in North America. Those are, those are cars that don't have the same compliance or homologation burden that uh, North American or European EVs have. So they're much lower in content. It's not a direct comp for Tesla. So, you know, really... 10% on a half a million on, on a half a million units is probably the fair comp. That's my 50,000 unit number. And uh, your guests um, can read what I wrote about China earlier this year. You know, we said we're positive. Uh, we timed it right. Uh, we met with several auto manufacturers there, several other former GM and other auto executives. And the reality is, you know, what will play will play. We'll know by the end of next year. But I think that the expectations now are really, really frothy, and it's a high hurdle to get over. 